Novel title, Reborn Again Chapter, 03-06. Author, Zephyr. Chapter 03 Bonds Forged in Time. From childhood to adolescence, in the garden of time, where seasons flow like rivers and dreams blossom with the dawn, three children of fate found their paths entwined. Sarah, the daughter of noble blood, and her two companions, Lucian, the shadow of resilience, and Cecilia, the flame of grace, grew together as the years danced around them like leaves in a gentle breeze. Sarah, the bright star who carried the wisdom of many lifetimes, though none could see the depths of her knowledge, her heart whispered secrets of the world unknown. She walked with the grace of the moon and the sharpness of a blade yet to be drawn. Lucian, the boy with eyes as sharp as the falcon's gaze, who learned the art of service and battle with equal reverence. His loyalty grew like an oak, unshakable and true, as he stood watch over Sarah, a silent guardian of her light. Cecilia, soft as the breeze that carries the scent of spring blossoms, yet within her stirred the storm of magic, untamed and powerful. Her hands, though small, held the promise of healing and the strength to shield those she loved. She learned not only the ways of the maid, but the craft of protection, her magic weaving a web of safety around Sarah. As the days turned into years, their bond grew deeper, like roots entwining beneath the earth, unseen yet unbreakable. In their quiet moments together, under the boughs of the great silver tree that stood at the heart of the Albrecht estate, they spoke not in words, but in the language of shared purpose. Lucian, tell me, Sarah said one evening as the sun sank behind the mountains, casting golden light across the world, what is it that you desire most in this life? Lucian, ever serious, paused to think, his dark eyes scanning the horizon as if searching for the answer in the fading light. To protect, he said simply, to be the sword that shields you, Lady Sarah. And what of you, Cecilia? Sarah turned her gaze to the girl beside her, who was playing with the leaves that had fallen into her lap. Cecilia smiled, her soft brown eyes filled with warmth. To keep the peace. To heal what is broken and bring light where there is shadow. Sarah nodded, her heart full of admiration for them both. Then let us grow together, she said, her voice as steady as the mountain winds. We will become stronger, wiser, and together, we shall forge a future none can foresee. Time wove its intricate tapestry, stitching together moments of laughter, learning, and growth. As they grew older, Sarah's teachings from her past life merged seamlessly with the lessons of the world of Renora. By day, she studied under the finest tutors, mastering history, politics, and magic, while Lucian trained with the knights and Cecilia studied under the estate's mages. But it was in the quiet of the evenings, when the world rested, that Sarah delved deep into the hidden knowledge her system provided. In the stillness of her room, with Yuki, the nine-tailed fox, curled at her feet and Pyra, the fiery phoenix, perched on the windowsill, Sarah accessed her system, a world within a world. It was here that she trained herself, summoning creatures from legends, practicing spells that could shape the stars, and crafting strategies that would one day turn the tide of battles. Lucian and Cecilia, though unaware of the depths of Sarah's powers, felt the shift in her presence. Her wisdom, her strength, it grew each day, and they followed her lead, trusting her implicitly. The days stretched into months and the months into years. Twelve summers passed, and the trio found themselves standing at the precipice of adolescence. No longer children, but not yet adults, they were like seeds waiting for the moment to break free from the soil and reach toward the sky. During these years, they faced trials, not of battle, but of the heart. The world around them changed, and as nobles from other lands visited the Albrecht estate, Lucian and Cecilia found themselves often standing at the edge of noble conversations, ever the servants, ever the watchers. Yet, in Sarah's presence, they were equals. She would not allow their birth to define their worth. In the quiet of the night, after the guests had gone, Sarah would gather them both in the moonlit courtyard, the stone cool beneath their feet, the stars twinkling overhead like ancient guardians. Titles are but dust, Sarah would say softly, her eyes reflecting the starlight. What matters is our bond, our strength, and our will. We are not simply noble and servant. We are a team, bound by something deeper than the rules of this world. Lucian would nod, his heart swelling with pride. Whatever comes, Lady Sarah, I will follow you. Cecilia, her voice as gentle as the night breeze, would add, and I will stand by your side, wherever the road takes us. It was in these quiet moments that their friendship truly blossomed, like the rare flowers that only bloomed once every hundred years under the moon's gaze. Their connection was not one born of duty, but of choice. Each had chosen the other, and together they walked the path of the unknown, fearless and united. 
One evening, as they sat beneath the great silver tree, Sarah turned to her companions with a thoughtful expression. The world is vast, she said, her voice carrying the weight of her knowledge. One day, we will leave this place, and we will see it for ourselves. But until then, we must be ready. We must become more than we are now. Lucian, ever vigilant, asked, how do we prepare for a future we cannot see? Sarah smiled, her gaze turning to the distant mountains. By becoming strong in body, mind, and heart. The world may be unpredictable, but we are not powerless. We are the masters of our own fates. And so, the three of them continued to grow, like the trees that stood tall in the forests of Eldoria. Sarah's power, though hidden, blossomed like a secret garden, while Lucian's skills with the blade became unmatched, and Cecilia's magic bloomed with the quiet strength of a mountain stream. Their friendship was no longer just a bond of companionship, it had become a force, an unbreakable shield that would protect them in the storms to come. For though they were still young, each knew in their hearts that the winds of change were approaching. And when the time came to step out into the world beyond the duchy, they would face it together. By day, Sarah was the dutiful daughter, a pupil of her family's ways. Duchess Alara, her mother, taught her the delicate arts of diplomacy, politics, and the intricacies of noble society. Alara's voice was soft, but each word was sharp, a lesson in both grace and guile. Remember, Sarah, her mother would say, her hands guiding Sarah's as they studied maps of far-off kingdoms, power is not always in the sword or spell. Power lies in the mind. In how you speak, in how you listen, in how you move through the world without the world even realizing it. And so Sarah learned, like a river learning its course, flowing quietly but unyieldingly through the lands of knowledge. Her mother's lessons were threads that wove themselves into her growing tapestry of wisdom. When the sun climbed higher and the midday heat kissed the stones of Eldoria, Duke Wilhelm von Albrecht would summon his children to the courtyard, where the clang of steel rang out like a song of ancient times. The duke, a giant of a man with eyes like the coldest winter winds, was as fierce as the knights he commanded. Sarah trained alongside her older brother Julius, the future knight, whose swordsmanship was already praised among the elite. The young boy's strikes were strong, precise, his movements calculated like a chess master in battle. Yet despite the gap in their years, Sarah danced around him with the grace of a fox, agile and quick, her smaller frame using speed where strength might fail. Her father's voice boomed like thunder, but his eyes shone with pride. Sarah, the sword is not meant for brute force alone. It is an extension of your will. Like your brother, strike with purpose, but move with wisdom. She nodded, internalizing the lessons of both her father and brother. The sword, like words, could shape the world, and in her hands, it was both shield and spear, a weapon of strategy and grace. In the evenings, Isolde, her second brother and gifted mage, would guide her through the arcane arts. Beneath the great pillars of the library, where old tomes hummed with forgotten magic, they practiced spells that crackled like the heartbeat of the stars. Isolde was only ten, but already a prodigy in magic, his hands weaving energy as if it were the very air he breathed. Mana is the thread that ties the soul to the world, Isolde explained, his hands glowing with a faint blue light as he conjured a small sphere of water. If you understand its flow, you can shape it, bend it, make it your own. Sarah watched, her mind absorbing every movement, every word. Her own magic was vast, her dragon-level mana swirling inside her like an untapped storm, but here with her brother, she learned to control it, to refine the wild power that pulsed in her veins. Isolde watched her with a mix of awe and curiosity. You've always been special, Sarah. More than any of us realize. Yet even with her family's love and guidance, Sarah knew that her true potential lay beyond the teachings of the duchy. In the dark, quiet hours when the moon bathed the world in silver, Sarah slipped away, unnoticed. The forests beyond the estate called to her, wild and untamed, a place where beasts roamed and ancient magic slept. Yuki, the silent nine-tailed fox, and Pyra, the blazing phoenix, followed her, ever watchful. They were her silent shadows, her companions in the secret world she had built for herself. Deep in the forest, where the trees whispered secrets older than kingdoms, Sarah trained alone. Her system, a hidden blessing, provided her with tools from a past life and powers unknown to this world. There, away from prying eyes, she summoned a weapon unlike any other, the custom M2 carbine, a sleek, deadly machine that hummed with the power of both technology and magic. The first time she fired it, there was no sound, only the faint ripple of air like a breath lost to the wind. 
The M2 carbine was silenced by her will, its bullets not mere metal, but crafted from pure mana, shaped by her mind. It was a weapon of the old world and the new, a fusion of her past and present lives. And the monsters of the forest, the stray wolves, the goblins, the kobolds, they fell before her like shadows before the dawn. Each beast she hunted gave her not just survival, but knowledge. The system rewarded her with 1,000x experience, each kill making her stronger, each victory sharpening her skills. With every fallen foe, Sarah's mana grew more refined, her power swelling like the sea before a storm. But the forest was more than a battlefield. It was a teacher. The creatures, though dangerous, carried within them the wisdom of the wild, a wisdom Sarah drank in with every step, with every breath. Yuki's soft paws padded silently beside her, and Pyra's wings glowed faintly, illuminating the darkness just enough to guide her way. Sarah's heart swelled with a quiet determination as she stared at the carcass of a fallen goblin one night. There is a balance to everything, she whispered to herself. Power, knowledge, will, it is all connected. And I must be the one to bring harmony to it all. As the months turned into years, Sarah's secret training in the forest became a ritual, a dance between her and the wild. She mastered the M2 carbine, turning it into an extension of her will, much like her sword. Her mind, already sharp, honed strategies from both worlds, magic and technology, might and cunning. But what she gained most was a sense of herself. The quiet forest nights, the thrill of hunting, the solitude of training, it all carved her into a being of immense potential. She was no longer just the youngest daughter of a noble house, she was becoming something more, something the world had not yet seen. And so, Sarah continued her dual life. By day, she was the brilliant noble daughter, the sister, the student, learning from her family and growing in their love. But by night, she was the hunter, the strategist, the warrior who wielded powers beyond imagination. She walked two worlds, the noble halls of Eldoria and the wilds of the unknown, and in doing so, she was preparing for the great destiny that awaited her. Under the cloak of night, when the moon bathed the forest in a silver glow and the winds whispered tales of old, Sarah Vaughn Albrecht moved through the trees like a shadow. Her heart beat steadily, her breath calm as the forest itself. It was a night for growth, a night for sharpening her edge against the wild. With her custom silent M2 carbine slung over her shoulder, Sarah was more than a child of nobility. She was a hunter, a warrior bound by her secret mission. By her side, Yuki, her nine-tailed fox, prowled silently, her soft fur gleaming faintly in the moonlight. Above them, Pyra, the phoenix firebird, soared silently, a beacon of power and protection. Tonight would be different. The forest was unusually still, and Sarah's instincts told her that something lurked beyond the ordinary beasts she had been training against. The air was thick with anticipation, as if the very trees were holding their breath, waiting for the arrival of something. More. System notification. Danger. Uncommon boss detected. Recommended level. 20. Your level. 15. Proceed with caution. Sarah's eyes narrowed. A boss. Her excitement flickered to life, tempered only by the knowledge that this battle would not be like the others. A greater challenge awaited her, and she relished it. Yuki, she whispered, her hand resting gently on the fox's soft fur. Stay close. Pyra, keep watch from above. Let's see what this forest is hiding. The deeper they moved into the woods, the thicker the air became, as if the very atmosphere was bending under the weight of an unseen presence. The trees grew gnarled, twisted, their branches like claws reaching toward the sky. The ground beneath her boots became soft, damp, and each step seemed to echo louder than the last. It wasn't long before she saw it. Standing in a small clearing, illuminated by the pale light of the moon, was a creature of nightmares, a greater troll, towering over her by at least ten feet. Its skin was like darkened stone, cracked and oozing with a foul, greenish liquid. Its eyes glowed a malevolent red, and in its massive hands, it held a jagged stone club that looked as though it could crush boulders with ease. System notification. Boss. Greater forest troll. Level. 25. Weakness. Fire and magic. Warning. Extreme physical resistance. Sarah's lips curled into a determined smile. A challenge worth my time. With a fluid motion, she unslung the M2 carbine from her back, its cold metal comforting in her hands. A soft hum filled the air as she activated the weapon's magical interface. The custom gun, using mano-infused ammo, thrummed with power, ready to unleash its fury. Yuki, her fox companion, growled low beside her, 
the faint glow of her true form, the legendary nine-tailed fox, radiating from her body. Pyra circled overhead, her fiery wings casting a warm light across the clearing, ready to unleash flames upon the enemy. Sarah leveled her weapon, her eyes narrowing as she focused on the troll. Let's see what you're made of. The troll roared, its deep voice reverberating through the forest, shaking the very ground. Without hesitation, it charged, its massive club raised to strike. But Sarah was faster. With the precision of a seasoned hunter, she squeezed the trigger. The M2 carbine barked out silent death, the man-infused rounds piercing through the air like whispers, too fast for the naked eye to track. The bullets struck the troll's chest, each impact rippling across its stone-like skin, sending shards of rock flying. But the creature barely flinched. Its physical resistance was greater than she had anticipated. Yuki now, Sarah commanded. In a flash of silver light, Yuki darted forward, her body a blur of speed. With a mighty leap, she sank her teeth into the troll's ankle, her claws glowing with a magical sheen. The troll let out a bellow of pain, stumbling as Yuki's enchanted bite broke through its natural defenses. Taking advantage of the opening, Sarah unleashed another volley of magic bullets, this time aiming for the creature's head. The round struck true, shattering part of the troll's stone-like face, but it wasn't enough. It roared again, raising its massive club high and bringing it down in a powerful arc toward Sarah. Dodge. Sarah's reflexes, enhanced by her system, kicked in. She rolled to the side just as the club slammed into the ground where she had stood, sending debris flying in every direction. Her breath quickened, but her mind remained calm. Pyra, hit it with fire. Sarah commanded, her voice sharp. Above, Pyra let out a screech, her fiery wings flaring wide as she summoned a torrent of flames. The firebird's attack engulfed the troll, flames licking at its stone body. The creature held in agony as the fire began to melt away its hardened skin, exposing the softer, vulnerable flesh beneath. Good, Sarah muttered under her breath. Now we've got a shot. With the troll momentarily blinded by the flames, Sarah sprang into action. She tapped into her dragon-level mana reserves, channeling the raw power through her body and into the M2 carbine. The weapon glowed with an intense light as it absorbed the mana, ready for the final strike. With a deep breath, Sarah steadied herself. She pulled the trigger, sending a continuous stream of mana-infused bullets directly into the troll's exposed flesh. Each shot was precise, aimed at the heart of the beast. The troll roared one last time, its voice echoing through the forest as it staggered, its massive form crumbling under the assault. And then, with a final, earth-shaking crash, the troll fell. Its body hit the ground with the weight of a small mountain, sending a cloud of dust into the air. The forest was silent once more, save for the soft rustle of leaves in the wind. System notification. Boss defeated. Greater forest troll. EXP gained. 10,000. X 1,000 multiplier applied. Level up. 1618. Skill. Greater mana manipulation unlocked. Sarah lowered her weapon, her chest rising and falling with steady breaths. A small, satisfied smile played on her lips. Not bad for a late night adventure. Yuki padded over to her, her tail swaying gently behind her, while Pyra landed softly on Sarah's shoulder, her warm feathers brushing against Sarah's cheek. Together, the three of them stood victorious, the night theirs. As Sarah looked down at the fallen troll, she felt the familiar surge of experience coursing through her, her system rewarding her efforts. But more than that, she felt the thrill of growth, the satisfaction of overcoming a challenge that had pushed her limits. One step closer, she whispered to herself, her eyes gleaming with determination. One step closer to mastering this world. With Yuki and Pyra by her side, she turned and disappeared back into the forest, leaving the remnants of the battle behind. The moon shone down on them, a silent witness to their quiet triumph. Tonight had been a victory, but the world was vast, and many more challenges awaited her. And Sarah was ready for them all. Chapter 04, A New Dawn, Age 14, Time for the Imperial School. The Duchy of Eldoria stirred with excitement as the morning sun cast its golden rays across the grand estate of the Von Albrecht family. Today was the day Sarah had been waiting for, the day she would leave the comfort of her home and enter a world much larger than the forest she had conquered and the halls she had grown in. At the age of 14, Sarah Von Albrecht, the youngest daughter of Duke Wilhelm and Duchess Alara, was ready to begin her journey at the Imperial Academy of Renora, a prestigious school for the kingdom's elite. Sarah stood before her mirror, adjusting the formal uniform of the academy. The crisp, navy blue fabric fit her perfectly, a symbol of her noble status. 
Her eyes, sharp and calculating, gazed back at her. Though her appearance was that of a refined young lady, her mind held knowledge and power far beyond her years. Behind her, Yuki, her nine-tailed fox in her small fluffy form, lay curled on the bed, while Pyra, the phoenix firebird, perched on the windowsill, her fiery feathers glowing faintly in the morning light. Ready for a new adventure? Sarah whispered to her companions. Yuki flicked an ear, her eyes half-closed, while Pyra let out a soft chirp of agreement. Sarah smiled. Let's make this interesting. The journey to the capital was uneventful, but Sarah's mind raced with possibilities. The Imperial Academy was where the future leaders, knights, and mages of the kingdom honed their skills. It was a place where alliances were made, where rivalries were born, and where the strongest emerged ready to take on the world. Sarah knew this was not just a place for learning, it was a battlefield of its own kind. Arriving at the Academy, she was greeted by a sight that would take anyone's breath away. The Academy of Renora was an imposing structure, with towering spires that reached into the sky and walls adorned with intricate carvings depicting the history of the kingdom. Students from noble families all across Renora were arriving, some in luxurious carriages, others accompanied by entourages of guards and servants. But Sarah, true to her nature, preferred to walk in alone. Her arrival was quiet, unnoticed by most, just the way she liked it. Inside, the halls were filled with the hum of excitement. Groups of students were already forming, some greeting old friends, others sizing up potential rivals. Sarah moved through the crowd with purpose, her gaze sharp as she observed those around her. Each student here came with their own ambitions, their own strengths. But Sarah knew that few would match what she had secretly cultivated over the years. The Academy's orientation began with the headmaster's speech, but Sarah's attention was elsewhere. Her system, always alert, pinged quietly in her mind. System notification. New quest. Imperial School Challenge. Objective. Establish dominance in your first year through combat, knowledge, and social influence. Bonus objective, defeat a rival before the end of the term. Rewards, increased reputation, unique skill unlocked. Sarah's lips twitched into a smile. Challenge accepted, she thought. The first few days were a whirlwind of activity. Classes on magic, swordsmanship, and diplomacy filled her schedule, but Sarah excelled in all of them, her mind and body shaped by years of training with her family. The other students began to notice her. Some admired her quiet confidence, while others saw her as a potential threat. Among her classmates, Sophia Lancaster, a bright-eyed girl with an infectious smile, became her first friend. Sophia, the daughter of a Marquis, was kind-hearted but sharp, her intelligence evident in every conversation. She quickly grew close to Sarah, drawn to her mysterious aura. Sarah, you're not like the others, Sophia said one day during a break between classes. You're different, stronger. Sarah smiled softly but said nothing. She didn't need to reveal everything just yet. But where there were friends, there were also rivals. Alexander von Creel, the arrogant heir of a powerful duke, took an immediate dislike to Sarah. He had a reputation for being one of the most talented students in both combat and magic, and his pride was as vast as his skill. Their first encounter happened during a swordsmanship class. The instructor had paired them together for sparring. Alexander, towering over Sarah and with a smug grin on his face, clearly underestimated her. This should be easy, he said, casually spinning his blade. Sarah raised an eyebrow but remained silent. She had faced greater challenges than a pompous noble boy. The duel began, and within seconds, it was clear who the superior fighter was. Sarah danced around Alexander's heavy strikes with ease, her movements swift and precise. She used her agility and intelligence to outmaneuver him, landing light blows on him that wouldn't harm but would humiliate. The students watching were stunned. How is she doing that? One whispered. She's incredible, another said. Frustrated and embarrassed, Alexander lunged at her with all his strength. Sarah, calm as ever, sidestepped and delivered a swift strike to his wrist, sending his sword clattering to the ground. He fell to one knee, gasping for breath, while Sarah stood over him, her sword pointed at his throat. It's over, she said, her voice low but firm. System notification. Rival defeated. Alexander von Creel. Reputation increased. Bonus objective complete. Defeat a rival before the end of the term. Reward. Skill unlocked. Tactical insight. The crowd was silent for a moment, before erupting into applause. Sarah sheathed her sword and walked away, leaving Alexander fuming. She didn't need his approval. She had made her point. The days turned into weeks and Sarah's presence at the academy became impossible to ignore. 
She excelled in every area, from magic to combat, and her quiet confidence drew the attention of both students and teachers alike. But with her growing reputation came enemies. In the shadows, plots were forming. Some students, jealous of her success, whispered behind her back, while others sought to undermine her in subtle ways. Sarah, ever the strategist, remained aware of it all. She had not come to the academy to make friends with everyone. She had come to grow stronger, to test her limits, and to prepare for the greater challenges that lay ahead. One evening, as the sun set over the academy and the halls grew quiet, Sarah stood at the edge of the training grounds, gazing out at the distant forest that bordered the school. The moon began to rise, casting a pale light across the land. Pyra and Yuki were at her side, their presence a comforting reminder of her true strength. New friends, new enemies, Sarah whispered, a faint smile playing on her lips. But this is only the beginning. Her journey had only just begun, and the challenges ahead would only grow more difficult. But Sarah von Albrecht was ready for them all. Age 14, Imperial Academy, first time in a magical school. The towering spires of the Imperial Academy of Renora loomed above Sarah as she made her way through the grand entrance, flanked by marble statues of ancient heroes and magical scholars. The Academy was a place where the future leaders of the kingdom honed their skills, both in magic and combat. This was a new chapter for Sarah von Albrecht, and though she had already experienced more than most of her peers could dream of, the world within these walls held its own challenges. The magic of the Academy pulsed in the air like a heartbeat, thick with ancient spells and untold knowledge. Even though Sarah had been trained in magic since childhood, the sheer density of power here was overwhelming. This was a place where magic was not just studied, it was lived, breathed, and woven into the very fabric of life. Walking through the hallways, Sarah could feel the eyes of other students upon her. Whispers followed her every step. Some were curious, others envious. She had already gained a reputation for her quiet yet commanding presence. But Sarah knew that reputation alone wouldn't carry her through this place. This academy was a battlefield of power, influence, and skill where the strong rose and the weak were left behind. System Notification Imperial Academy First Year Objective Establish social influence, form alliances, and gain mastery over magical disciplines. Optional Quest Defeat a rival in magical combat within the first semester. Reward Spell Upgrade Arcane Mastery Sarah's lips curled into a slight smile. The system was always there, guiding her subtly, providing challenges and rewards that aligned with her goals. This was a game, and Sarah intended to win. The first day of classes, Sarah's schedule was as rigorous as she had expected. From early morning until dusk, she attended lectures on arcane theory, magical history, and practical spellcasting. Each class was taught by renowned scholars, masters of their craft, and Sarah absorbed the knowledge eagerly. Despite being new to the academy, it quickly became evident that she was ahead of most students. In her magical theory class, she caught the attention of Professor Aranis, a seasoned archmage who lectured on the principles of mana flow and spell composition. Miss Von Albrecht, Professor Aranis called out during a particularly complex explanation of mana channels. Could you please explain the practical applications of triweaving mana streams in multi-elemental magic? The class turned their heads toward her, some curious, others hoping she would falter. Sarah stood, her voice calm and measured. Triweaving mana streams allows for greater versatility and power in elemental spellcasting. By harmonizing the flow of mana from three different elements, you can maintain balance and control without overloading one particular channel. This technique can enhance the potency of spells, particularly in high-stress combat situations where adaptability is crucial. The professor raised an eyebrow, clearly impressed. Well said, Miss Vaughn Albrecht. It seems you have a firm grasp on advanced mana manipulation. As she sat down, she noticed the envious glares from some students, but others looked at her with newfound respect. It was a small victory, but in the Imperial Academy, every advantage mattered. Meeting friends and rivals During her free time, Sarah often found herself wandering the Academy grounds, observing the other students. One afternoon, as she studied alone under a large oak tree, she was approached by a familiar face, Sophia Lancaster, the bright and energetic noble girl who had befriended her early on. Hey, Sarah. Sophia smiled, her blonde hair bouncing as she plopped down beside her. How are you finding the academy so far? Sarah looked up from her book, a small smile forming. Challenging, but that's why I'm here. Sophia grinned. Same, but I think you're making quite the impression. Some of the professors have already been talking about you. Before Sarah could respond, a voice interrupted them. Cold, cutting, and dripping with arrogance. Making an impression? I suppose even common talent can attract attention in the right circles. 
Sarah turned her gaze toward the newcomer, Liliana Dubraith, the daughter of a powerful duke from the southern regions of Renora. She was tall and elegant, her raven black hair falling perfectly around her shoulders, and her dark eyes were filled with disdain. It was clear from the way she carried herself that she believed she was superior to everyone around her. Sarah's gaze remained calm, unreadable. Liliana Dubraith, I presume. Liliana smirked. So, you've heard of me. Good. Then you should also know that this academy is no place for pretenders. Just because you've shown a little promise doesn't mean you belong in the higher circles. Sophia bristled, her eyes flashing with anger. Liliana, that's enough. Sarah's just as talented as anyone here, if not more. Liliana laughed softly, her gaze never leaving Sarah's. Oh, I'm sure. But words won't get you far, Lancaster. Only power does. She turned back to Sarah. I hope you're ready to prove yourself, Vaughn Albrecht. Otherwise, you'll be left behind. With that, Liliana walked away, her entourage of admirers trailing behind her. System notification. New rival detected. Liliana Dubraith. Quest update. Defeat Liliana in magical combat to establish dominance. Reward. Arcane mastery. Sophia huffed, clearly irritated. She's such a... Sarah placed a hand on Sophia's shoulder, her expression calm. Let her talk. She'll have her chance soon enough. First magical combat class. A few days later, Sarah found herself standing in the academy's magical arena, where students practiced their spells in a controlled environment. Today's lesson focused on practical combat magic, an area Sarah had been secretly honing for years. The instructor, Master Alara, a strict woman with a no-nonsense attitude, addressed the class. Today, you will pair up and spar using only magical abilities. This will test your control, focus, and adaptability in combat situations. Sarah stood silently, observing as students nervously paired off. Unsurprisingly, Liliana Dubraith strode confidently toward her, her smirk never wavering. Looks like we'll finally see what you're made of, Vaughn Albrecht, Liliana said, her voice dripping with superiority. Sarah nodded, stepping into the arena without a word. The other students gathered around, eager to see the clash between the two noble daughters. The duel began. Liliana wasted no time, launching a barrage of fire and lightning spells in quick succession. Her control over the elements was impressive, and her spells crackled with raw power as they raced toward Sarah. But Sarah was not one to be overwhelmed. With precise movements, she raised a hand, summoning a barrier of water and wind, deflecting the incoming attacks with ease. The crowd murmured in awe at her control over dual elements. Liliana narrowed her eyes. You're not bad, but you'll need more than defense to win. With a flick of her wrist, Liliana summoned a massive column of fire, aiming directly at Sarah. The heat was intense, the ground beneath Sarah's feet beginning to scorch. But she remained calm. System notification. Mana reserves. Dragon level detected. Mana manipulation active. Arcane stream ready. Sarah's eyes glowed faintly as she tapped into her deep mana reserves. She extended her hand, summoning a wave of pure arcane energy, infused with wind and water. The energy cut through Liliana's flames like a blade through silk, extinguishing the fire and sending a shockwave across the arena. The force of the blast knocked Liliana off her feet, her eyes wide with shock. She scrambled to recover, but it was too late. Sarah had already closed the gap between them, her hand glowing with arcane power. Yield, Sarah said softly, her voice calm but commanding. Liliana clenched her fists, but she knew she had lost. Gritting her teeth, she lowered her head. I yield. System notification. Rival defeated. Liliana Dubraith. Reward. Spell upgrade. Arcane mastery unlocked. Reputation increased. The crowd erupted in applause, but Sarah paid them no mind. She had won the duel, but this was only the beginning. There were greater challenges ahead, and Sarah was determined to meet them all. As Liliana walked away, defeated but not broken, Sarah's mind was already on the next step. She had made her mark, but in the Imperial Academy, power and influence were fleeting. Only the truly strong could maintain their place at the top. With Sophia by her side, and new allies beginning to emerge, Sarah knew her journey at the Academy had only just begun. The Imperial Academy's magical arena was a vast, open space, designed to test the combat abilities of students under strict supervision. The floor was made of enchanted stone that absorbed excess magic, while the high walls shimmered faintly with protective wards to shield spectators from stray spells. Today's lesson in practical combat magic had the whole class on edge, but Sarah Vaughn Albrecht remained calm, her sharp eyes observing every detail of the arena. Standing in the center of the crowd, Sarah listened as Master Alara, the strict combat instructor, gave the rules of engagement. 
The silver-haired woman was known for her no-nonsense approach, and today was no different. You will engage in pairs, Master Alera's voice rang out, clear and commanding. The objective is to test your control, focus, and adaptability in magical combat. No lethal force is allowed. Your goal is to incapacitate or force your opponent to yield. Remember, magic is a tool, but mastery requires discipline. The air in the arena was thick with anticipation. The students whispered among themselves, their eyes darting around, seeking potential rivals or allies. Sarah, however, stood silently, her mind already focused on the upcoming challenge. System notification. New quest. Prove your strength in magical combat. Objective. Win your first magical duel and impress your peers. Bonus objective. Defeat your opponent with minimal effort. Reward. Enhanced mana control. Reputation boost. Sarah glanced briefly at the notification, her lips curling into a faint smile. She knew the importance of this moment. Not just for the quest, but for the reputation she had already begun to build at the academy. This was her chance to cement her status. Before long, a familiar voice cut through the tension. Vaughn Albrecht. Sarah turned to see Liliana Dubraith, the daughter of Duke Dubraith, striding toward her with an air of arrogance. Her raven-black hair cascaded down her back, and her sharp, dark eyes were filled with challenge. She was known throughout the academy as a skilled mage and a fierce competitor. And now, it seemed, she had set her sights on Sarah. You and I will settle this here, Liliana declared, her voice cold. It's time to see if you're truly as capable as the rumors claim. Sarah remained calm, her expression unreadable. She had expected this. Liliana's pride would not allow her to ignore a potential rival, especially one from a family as prestigious as the Von Albrechts. Very well, Sarah replied evenly, stepping forward into the arena center. Let's see what you're capable of, Dubraith. The duel begins. The students gathered around, eager to witness the clash between the two noble daughters. Whispers filled the air, many speculating on who would come out on top. Both girls were renowned for their talents, but this was the first time they would face each other in combat. Master Alara raised her hand, her eyes stern as she looked between the two combatants. Begin. Liliana wasted no time, her hand flicking out as she summoned a wave of fire. The blazing torrent roared toward Zara with incredible speed, its heat distorting the air around it. The force of the spell was impressive, especially for someone their age. But Zara was ready. With a graceful movement, she extended her hand and summoned a barrier of water and wind, the two elements swirling together in perfect harmony. The fire slammed into the barrier but was quickly extinguished, leaving nothing but steam in its wake. Liliana's eyes narrowed. Impressive. But let's see how you handle this. She raised both hands and with a surge of power, unleashed a series of lightning bolts that crackled through the air like furious serpents. The ground beneath them sizzled as the energy tore through the arena, arcing toward Sarah with deadly intent. Sarah's eyes glowed faintly as she channeled her mana, moving swiftly and gracefully as she dodged the attacks. The lightning bolt struck where she had been moments before, but Sarah remained unharmed, her movements fluid and effortless. The crowd gasped in awe at her agility, but Sarah knew this wasn't enough. She needed to finish this duel quickly. System notification. Mana reserves. Dragon level detected. Arcane stream ready. Tactical insight active. Drawing upon her immense mana reserves, Sarah focused her energy into a single, precise attack. She raised her hand, summoning a sphere of pure arcane energy, infused with elements of wind and water. The spell hummed with raw power, its surface shimmering like the sky before a storm. With a flick of her wrist, she launched the sphere toward Liliana. The arcane projectile moved with lightning speed, cutting through the air with deadly precision. Liliana barely had time to react, summoning a shield of earth in a desperate attempt to block the attack. But it wasn't enough. The arcane sphere collided with the shield, shattering it instantly. The force of the impact sent Liliana flying backward, her body skidding across the arena floor. She gasped, struggling to catch her breath as the residual magic dissipated around her. The arena fell silent. Sarah stood tall, her expression calm and composed. She had not used her full strength, but it was clear that she had won the duel with ease. Liliana, bruised but not broken, pushed herself to her feet, her face flushed with a mixture of embarrassment and frustration. I yield, Liliana said through gritted teeth, her pride clearly wounded. System notification. Quest complete. Prove your strength in magical combat. Bonus objective achieved. Defeat your opponent with minimal effort. Rewards. Enhanced mana control. Reputation boost. Master Alara stepped forward, her eyes filled with approval as she addressed the students. 
An excellent display of control and power, Von Albrecht. Well done. The crowd erupted into applause, but Sarah paid little attention to the praise. She had accomplished what she needed to, but there were far greater challenges ahead. As Liliana walked away, her head held high despite the defeat, Sarah knew that this would not be the last time their paths crossed. The Imperial Academy was a place of endless rivalries and alliances, and this duel had merely been the first of many tests to come. With her reputation now firmly established, Sarah turned her gaze to the future, her mind already focused on the next steps in her journey. She had proven her strength, but there was so much more she needed to learn, so much more she needed to accomplish. The Academy would be her proving ground, and Sarah von Albrecht was determined to rise to the top, no matter what it took. Chapter 05 Age 14, Imperial Academy. The bustling halls of the Imperial Academy echoed with laughter and chatter as students made their way to the grand dining hall. The air was thick with the aroma of roasted meats, fresh bread, and a variety of tantalizing dishes prepared by the Academy's skilled chefs. Sarah von Albrecht, still riding the high of her earlier duel, walked alongside her friend Sophia Lancaster, her spirits lifted by the prospect of lunch. As they entered the dining hall, the sheer scale of the room took Sarah's breath away. High arch ceilings adorned with elaborate chandeliers illuminated long wooden tables that stretched across the space. Students of all ages sat together, exchanging stories, laughter, and the occasional competitive banter. The atmosphere was vibrant, a stark contrast to the intensity of their magical studies. Finding a table, where should we sit? Sophia asked, scanning the room for familiar faces. Sarah shrugged, her gaze sweeping over the crowd. She spotted Liliana seated at a table surrounded by her entourage, her expression a mixture of irritation and determination as she recounted the duel. Across the hall, she saw her brothers, Julius and Isolde, waving her over to their table. Let's sit with my siblings, Sarah suggested, pointing in their direction. They've been waiting to hear how my first day went. As they approached, Julius, with his tousled brown hair and eager expression, leaned forward, his eyes shining with curiosity. So, how did it go? Did you win your duel? Sarah grinned, recalling the moment she had unleashed her powerful arcane blast. I did. It was intense, but I managed to defeat Liliana. Isolde, with her long flowing hair and keen intellect, chimed in. I heard she summoned a fire elemental. That's impressive, Sarah. Yes, but you know what they say. Never underestimate your opponent, Sarah replied, taking a seat. She's not going to give up easily. Lunch conversations. As platters of food were placed before them, the conversation turned lighthearted. The siblings exchanged stories from their respective classes, laughter punctuating the air. Suddenly, Julius leaned in closer. You should have seen the sparring match in our training hall today. I managed to take down two senior knights. His pride was palpable. Impressive. Sarah replied, her eyes sparkling with admiration. I'll have to come watch you sometime. Sophia interjected, her voice bright with excitement. We should all train together. Imagine the synergy of your combat skills, Sarah, and Julius's knightly prowess. Not to mention Isolde's magic, Julius added, nodding at their sister. We'd be unstoppable. Isolde smiled modestly, tucking a strand of hair behind her ear. It's a good idea. We can help each other improve and learn new techniques. As the siblings discussed their training strategies, Sarah felt a warmth swell in her chest. This was family, supportive, encouraging, and always pushing each other to reach new heights. The arrival of rivals. Just then, the chatter around them shifted. Liliana and her entourage approached, an air of arrogance surrounding them. So, the great Sarah von Albrecht thinks she's a star now, Liliana said, her tone dripping with mockery. Enjoying your moment in the spotlight? Sarah met her gaze with unwavering confidence. Just trying to enjoy lunch, Liliana. Not everyone needs to make a spectacle out of themselves. Liliana's eyes narrowed, but before she could retort, Sophia interjected. We're just here to eat and relax, not to engage in petty rivalries. Petty. Liliana scoffed, crossing her arms. You'll find it's far more than that when you're on the receiving end of real competition. Enjoy your lunch while you can, because I'll be watching you. As Liliana and her friends walked away, Sarah exchanged a glance with her siblings and Sophia. There was an unspoken understanding among them. This was just the beginning. The rivalry had been established, and they would have to be ready for whatever challenges lay ahead. Reflection and strategy. Once the tension had dissipated, Sarah returned her focus to her meal. Yet, her mind raced with thoughts of the future. She couldn't afford to lose sight of her goals. The academy was a crucible, and she was determined to emerge victorious. Are you all right? Sophia asked, breaking through Sarah's contemplative silence. 
Yeah, just thinking, Sarah replied, taking a bite of her food, about how to prepare for the next duel. Julius raised an eyebrow. You mean Liliana? Don't worry about her too much. You've proven you can take her on. True, Sarah admitted. But I need to be ready for whatever she throws at me next. She's not going to back down after losing. Isolde nodded in agreement. And you shouldn't underestimate her either. Use this time to strengthen your abilities and consider new strategies. Lunch time. The food fight. As Sarah and her friends finished their meal and began to rise from the table, an unexpected commotion erupted from across the dining hall. Laughter erupted, accompanied by the sounds of shuffling chairs and the clatter of trays. It seemed a food fight was brewing, and Sarah couldn't help but turn her head, intrigued. At the center of the chaos, a group of students had begun tossing food back and forth like it was an Olympic sport. Mashed potatoes flew through the air, landing with splats against the walls. A student from the far table launched a roll of bread, which spiraled through the air before hitting an unsuspecting boy square in the face. His shocked expression sent the nearby diners into fits of laughter. The spark ignites. Looks like things are getting out of hand, Sophia said, trying to suppress a giggle as she watched the scene unfold. Before Sarah could respond, Julius's competitive spirit kicked in. We can't let them have all the fun, he declared, picking up a handful of green peas and aiming at the nearest target. Wait, Julius, don't. But it was too late. The peas shot across the table, hitting a startled girl right in the forehead. She turned, her mouth agape in surprise, and then burst into laughter, her initial shock quickly turning into amusement. With a laugh, Sophia joined in. Let's show them what we've got. She grabbed a handful of macaroni and cheese and hurled it toward the other table. The gooey pasta splattered against the wall, sending a cascade of laughter rippling through the hall. The great offensive, Sarah, not one to back down from a challenge, jumped into action. All right, let's do this. She shouted, reaching for her tray and grabbing a piece of pizza. With a quick flick of her wrist, she sent it flying across the room, where it landed with a glorious splat on the back of one of Liliana's friends. The dining hall erupted into a full-blown food fight, students rushing to join the fun. Tables were overturned as friends grabbed whatever they could, salads, breads, pastries, launching them like projectiles. Laughter echoed, drowning out any attempts at order from the few teachers present, who were caught between disbelief and amusement. In the midst of chaos, caught up in the frenzy, Sarah ducked and dodged flying food while trying to retaliate against her targets. She grabbed a handful of mashed potatoes and, with a mischievous grin, hurled it at Liliana, who was currently engaged in a duel of bread rolls with a rival girl. The potatoes hit their mark, covering Liliana in creamy goodness. Sarah... Liliana exclaimed, shock evident on her face as she wiped the mess from her eyes. You'll pay for that. Bring it on. Sarah called back, laughing as she ducked behind a nearby table. The thrill of the food fight coursed through her veins, and she could feel the adrenaline of competition heightening her senses. Epic escalation. Just when it seemed like the food fight couldn't get any wilder, a student at the far end of the hall grabbed a jug of syrup. With a wild gleam in his eyes, he tipped it over, sending a sticky stream of syrup pouring across the floor and turning the entire area into a hazardous zone. Slippery floor. Someone yelled, and the warning was barely audible above the roars of laughter. As students attempted to navigate the gooey terrain, a few slipped, tumbling to the ground with yelps of surprise. The sight of their friends laughing while lying in a pool of syrup only fueled the laughter further. Crafting chaos. In the midst of the chaos, Sarah noticed a few students with magical talents attempting to enhance the food fight. A boy with a flick of his wrist sent a wave of fruit salads soaring through the air, showering unsuspecting victims with diced strawberries and melon cubes. Impressive, Sarah thought, her strategic mind racing. If we're going to do this, we should elevate our game. With a grin, she summoned her mana, weaving it into the air around her. Channeling her energy, she formed a small water spell that condensed into tiny orbs. With a flick of her fingers, she sent the orbs flying, raining down on her friends like a refreshing drizzle. It wasn't just about chaos, it was about crafting the experience. Now we're talking. Sophia laughed, catching a water orb with her mouth as she dove behind the cover of a table. The climax of fun. As the food fight reached its zenith, Sarah felt exhilarated. Laughter, food, and magic combined into a whirlwind of fun. The air was thick with the scent of various dishes, and the atmosphere buzzed with energy. Suddenly, Liliana charged at Sarah, her arms raised high, wielding a plate of spaghetti like a weapon. I'm coming for you. She shouted, her voice a mix of challenge and playful fury. Oh no. Sarah squealed, but it was too late. 
Liliana launched the spaghetti, the noodles flying through the air like a mass of writhing serpents. Sarah quickly summoned another water orb to counter the incoming pasta attack. With a splash, the orb collided with the plate of spaghetti, sending noodles flying in all directions. The crowd gasped as the duel between them became the centerpiece of the food fight, cheers erupting around them. The aftermath. Finally, the lunch period drew to a close, and the magical combat class was set to begin again. The once pristine dining hall was now a chaotic mess, food smeared across tables, walls, and students alike. As the bell chimed, signaling the end of lunch, Sarah looked around at the chaos they had created. Students were covered in remnants of their culinary battles, laughter still echoing through the hall. Epic! Sophia exclaimed, wiping a smudge of mashed potatoes from her cheek. That was the best lunch ever. Agreed. Sarah replied, still grinning from ear to ear. But we'd better clean up before the teachers come in. The group joined together, gathering their wits and attempting to restore some semblance of order. As they worked to clean up the remnants of the food fight, Sarah couldn't help but feel a sense of camaraderie with her peers. This was what the academy was all about, bonding through shared experiences, challenges, and of course, a little bit of chaos. Chapter 06 Reprimand Age 14, Imperial Academy After lunch The aftermath of the legendary food fight was still fresh in everyone's minds as Sarah, Sophia, Julius, and the rest of the students trudged back to their classrooms, a lingering sense of exhilaration still buzzing in the air. The grand dining hall, now a battlefield of mashed potatoes, spaghetti, and magical water orbs, had been hastily cleaned up by staff with a mix of spells and mundane scrubbing. As Sarah walked down the corridors of the Imperial Academy, she couldn't shake the uneasy feeling creeping up her spine. The fun of the food fight was undeniable, but she knew the reckoning was coming. The Academy, despite its nurturing of magic and combat, had strict rules, and starting a food war, no matter how epic, wasn't something the teachers would let slide easily. Do you think they'll go easy on us? Sophia asked, a hint of worry creeping into her voice. Sarah shrugged, though she had her doubts. We're about to find out the headmistress's office. It didn't take long for their concerns to be confirmed. As soon as they returned to their classrooms, a stern-faced servant approached, tapping Sarah on the shoulder. The headmistress would like a word with you and your friends. Please follow me. Sarah exchanged a quick glance with Sophia, Julius, and the others. The joy of their lunchtime victory faded as they followed the servant down the long stone corridor toward the administrative wing of the academy. The walls were lined with ancient portraits of past headmasters and headmistresses, their stern eyes seeming to watch over the students with judgment. When they finally reached Headmistress Valeria's office, Sarah could feel her heart race a little faster. Headmistress Valeria was not someone to be taken lightly. A former archmage and renowned for her no-nonsense demeanor, she had a reputation for being strict but fair. The door creaked open, revealing the formidable woman seated behind an ornate oak desk. Her robes were pristine, her eyes sharp and calculating as she regarded the group of students now standing before her. Facing the consequences, Ah, uh, Sarah von Albrecht, Julius von Albrecht, and the rest of your companions, Headmistress Valeria began, her tone calm but laced with authority. Do you know why you're here? Sarah, trying to maintain her composure, nodded. Yes, Headmistress. It's about the food fight. The Headmistress raised an eyebrow. Indeed. It seems you and your fellow students found lunchtime to be the perfect opportunity to engage in chaotic behavior. Julius, always the brave one, stepped forward. Headmistress, it was meant to be harmless fun. We didn't mean to cause such a mess. Valeria's eyes flicked toward him, unimpressed. Harmless fun, you say? There is a difference between fun and disorder. You may not have intended harm, but the disruption you caused is unacceptable. You are students of the Imperial Academy, the future leaders of this kingdom. Such reckless behavior reflects poorly on all of you. Sarah stood tall, knowing it was time to accept responsibility. We understand, headmistress. It was a moment of poor judgment. We'll accept any punishment you deem necessary. Valeria's gaze softened, but only slightly. It's good that you are willing to take responsibility, Sarah. However, actions have consequences. You and your friends will be assigned attention for the next week. You'll spend your evenings helping the academy staff with maintenance duties. The collective groan from the group was audible, but they knew better than to argue. Detention wasn't uncommon at the academy, but the thought of scrubbing floors or repairing magical wards for a week wasn't exactly thrilling. The lecture. As Valeria leaned back in her chair, her expression turned more thoughtful. While I am disappointed in your behavior, I cannot ignore the creativity that was on display during the incident. Her gaze flicked over Sarah in particular. Miss Von Albrecht, I saw the magic you used in that food fight, water orbs, if I'm not mistaken. 
That spell is not part of the standard curriculum for your level. Sarah blinked, caught off guard by the observation. I, uh, learned it through independent study. Valeria nodded slowly, a slight smile playing on her lips. I see. Your potential is undeniable, Sarah, and that goes for all of you. However, power without discipline is dangerous. The Academy exists to mold your talents, to ensure that when you leave these halls, you are ready to use your abilities responsibly. Julius shifted uncomfortably. We understand, headmistress. Good, Valeria said, her tone final. Let this be a lesson to all of you. Fun is not forbidden at the Academy, but it must never come at the expense of order and respect for those around you. Dismissed. Aftermath. As they exited the headmistress's office, the group let out a collective sigh of relief. The reprimand had been stern, but it could have been much worse. Sophia nudged Sarah with her elbow. Detention for a week, huh? Well, at least we didn't get expelled. Sarah grinned. Yeah, we'll survive. Besides, it could be a good opportunity to train while we're at it. Who knows? We might even learn something useful from maintenance duties. Julius laughed, always the optimist. I'll race you to see who can scrub the most floors in the shortest time. As they walked back toward the classrooms, the initial sting of punishment began to fade. Sarah's mind was already turning toward the future, her thoughts filled with strategies for her next magical combat class and how to continue pushing herself to improve. The reprimand had been a sobering reminder of the balance between fun and responsibility, but it didn't dampen Sarah's spirit. If anything, it fueled her determination to keep growing stronger. After all, she was Sarah Vaughn Albrecht, and she wasn't about to let a little food fight stop her from reaching her full potential. Age 14, Imperial Academy. Extra class, how a noble should behave. After the disciplinary meeting with Headmistress Valeria, Sarah, Julius, and Sophia gathered their belongings and prepared for their next class. The day had taken a serious turn, and the weight of their reprimand hung heavily on their shoulders. However, the knowledge that they would soon engage in a lesson about noble conduct offered a slight distraction from the aftermath of their food fight escapade. As they entered the elegantly decorated classroom, a mix of anticipation and trepidation filled the air. This was not just any class, it was an extra lesson focusing on the behaviors expected of noble students. The instructor, Lady Eleanor, was a former noble herself and a stickler for etiquette, always dressed impeccably in flowing robes that spoke of her aristocratic roots. The expectations of nobility. Welcome, students, Lady Eleanor began, her voice smooth yet authoritative. Today, we will explore how a noble should conduct themselves in society. As young members of noble families, you have responsibilities that go beyond your magical studies and combat training. Sarah sat up straighter, keenly aware that her recent antics in the dining hall had contradicted the very principles they were about to discuss. Lady Eleanor continued, her eyes scanning the room. Your actions reflect not only on yourselves, but also on your families and the academy. Nobility is not merely a title, it is a way of life. The instructor moved gracefully to the front of the class, where a large chalkboard displayed the words noble etiquette in elegant script. To begin, let's discuss the fundamentals of noble behavior. Can anyone tell me the significance of decorum in our society? Sophia raised her hand tentatively. It shows respect for others and ourselves? Exactly. Lady Eleanor smiled. Decorum is about maintaining dignity and respect in all interactions. It involves being aware of your surroundings and understanding how your behavior impacts others. The art of conversation. As the lesson progressed, Lady Eleanor emphasized the importance of conversation among nobles. A noble must be well-versed in various topics from politics to the arts. Engaging in conversation with grace and poise can open many doors and forge alliances. Like networking? Julius chimed in, his curiosity piqued. Precisely, Lady Eleanor affirmed. Networking is essential for future leaders, but it must be approached with sincerity and authenticity. Nobility is not just about power, it is about building relationships based on trust and respect. Sarah felt a twinge of realization. She had always been focused on her abilities and magical prowess, but understanding the nuances of social interaction was equally important. Now, let's practice, Lady Eleanor said, her eyes gleaming with enthusiasm. Pair up and engage in a conversation as though you are meeting for the first time at a formal gathering. Discuss a topic of your choice, but remember to uphold decorum and show respect for your partner's opinions. The practice. As the students formed pairs, Sarah found herself facing Sophia. Ready? Sophia asked, a hint of nervousness in her voice. Let's give it a try, Sarah replied, masking her own apprehension. Greetings, Lady Sophia, Sarah began, adopting a tone befitting the setting. What do you think of the upcoming ball at the Royal Palace? Sophia hesitated before responding, Greetings, Lady Sarah. 
I believe it will be a splendid event, offering a great opportunity to network with other nobles and showcase our family's prestige. As they exchanged polite banter, Sarah noticed how easy it was to slip into the role of a noblewoman. They discussed their favorite styles of dance, the latest fashion trends, and the importance of making a good impression at the ball. Excellent work. Lady Eleanor praised after observing the pairs. Remember, practice makes perfect. The more you engage in such conversations, the more natural it will become. A moment of reflection. Once the practice session concluded, Lady Eleanor directed the class to sit in a semicircle. Now, let's reflect on what we've learned today. Can anyone share a key takeaway? Sarah raised her hand, a newfound confidence swelling within her. I learned that being a noble is not just about power and privilege. It's about responsibility and how our actions affect others. I realize now that I need to be more mindful of my behavior, especially after today's events. Lady Eleanor nodded approvingly. Very well said, Sarah. Being a noble means carrying oneself with grace and responsibility, both in public and private settings. Your reputation will follow you, so ensure it is one of respect and integrity. The path forward. As the class came to an end, Sarah felt a sense of clarity wash over her. The lesson had not only highlighted the importance of noble conduct, but had also given her valuable insights into how she could balance her ambitions with her responsibilities. As the students filed out of the classroom, Sarah turned to Julius and Sophia. I know we're stuck in detention, but maybe we can use that time to refine our skills, both in magic and etiquette. Julius grinned, the spirit of camaraderie rekindling. Sounds like a plan. Who knows? We might come out of this even stronger. With a new determination, Sarah walked alongside her friends, ready to face the challenges ahead. The journey to becoming a true noble was just beginning, and she was prepared to rise to the occasion. Age 14, Imperial Academy. A fury awakened. The sun dipped low in the sky as Sarah, Julius, and Sophia exited the Imperial Academy. The warmth of the day lingered, but a chill had settled in Sarah's heart, fueled by the events of the afternoon. Their extra class on noble behavior had been enlightening, but the reprimand still stung. As they walked along the cobblestone path leading away from the academy, they spotted a small group of students gathered in an agitated cluster. The tension in the air was palpable, and Sarah's curiosity peaked. What's going on? She asked, moving closer to the crowd. Julius and Sophia followed suit, their expressions shifting from curiosity to concern as they pushed their way to the front. There, they found a scene that sent a rush of anger coursing through Sarah. A young homeless child, no more than eight years old, sat on the ground, dirt smudged across their face and clothes. Tears streamed down the child's cheeks as they clutched a tattered toy. Towering over them was Count Reginald, a noble known for his arrogance and disdain for those he deemed beneath him. The confrontation. Look at this wretched thing. Count Reginald sneered, his voice dripping with contempt. You think you can beg for scraps in front of me? You're a disgrace. Sarah's heart raced as she watched the Count kick the child's toy away, sending it tumbling across the dusty ground. The sight of the child's despair ignited a fury within her that she could no longer contain. Count Reginald! Sarah shouted, her voice cutting through the murmurs of the crowd. How do you treat a child like that? The Count turned, his expression shifting from surprise to irritation. And who do you think you are, little girl? You may be the daughter of a duke, but you're nothing compared to me. Sarah stepped forward, fists clenched at her sides. I'm not just a duke's daughter, I'm a noble with a sense of justice. You've crossed a line, and I won't let you bully this child. The crowd fell silent, tension crackling in the air. Julius and Sophia exchanged worried glances, knowing Sarah's temper often led her into trouble. A noble's wrath. Is that so? Reginald smirked, stepping closer, his arrogance on full display. What are you going to do? Challenge me to a duel? You're nothing but a child yourself. Maybe I am. Sarah shot back, her voice steady and fierce. But I'm not afraid of you. If you want to make a mockery of someone weaker, then I'll show you what a true noble can do. With a swift motion, she summoned her M2 carbine, its sleek design gleaming in the fading light. The weapon appeared in her hands as she pointed it at the ground, a show of confidence that left the onlookers in awe. Put that down. Reginald barked, but the growing crowd began to murmur in anticipation. You think I'm bluffing? Sarah's voice rang out, unwavering. Let's settle this like nobles. You'll face me in a duel. No weapons, just us. Or are you too afraid? The duel. Reginald's arrogance faltered for a moment as he assessed the situation. The challenge hung heavy in the air. A duel between noble children would draw the attention of the academy and the nobility, but it was a risk he was willing to take to save face. Very well, he sneered, straightening his posture. I accept your challenge. But don't expect mercy when I wipe the floor with you. Then let's do this. 
Sarah replied, adrenaline surging through her veins. The students formed a circle around them, the tension thickening as they prepared for the confrontation. The young homeless child watched with wide eyes, tears still glistening on their cheeks, as Sarah stepped into the makeshift arena. With a nod from Julius, the duel began. Sarah charged forward, her movements swift and calculated. She had trained in combat, honing her skills over the years. The lessons in magic and swordsmanship flooded back to her as she focused on the arrogant noble before her. The clash. Reginald lunged first, swinging a fist toward Sarah's face. She dodged to the side, feeling the rush of air as his punch narrowly missed. In that moment, she retaliated, delivering a swift kick to his abdomen that sent him staggering back. The crowd gasped, surprised at her agility and strength. Reginald growled, anger flickering in his eyes. You'll regret this, girl. He charged at her again, but Sarah was ready. She ducked beneath his swing, quickly spinning around and delivering another well-aimed kick to his side. This time, he went down, hitting the ground with a grunt of pain. Stop. You're embarrassing yourself. Sarah shouted, her voice echoing through the crowd as she stood her ground, heart pounding in her chest. Fury unleashed. Reginald got back to his feet, fury igniting in his gaze. He lunged once more, but this time, Sarah was determined to end this. With a surge of energy, she unleashed her training, combining her magic with her combat skills. Elemental strike, she called out, channeling her mana into a swift jab of energy that sent Reginald crashing to the ground once more. The force of the blow stunned him, leaving him gasping for breath. The crowd erupted in cheers, and Sarah felt a rush of exhilaration. She had stood up for the child and proved that nobility was not just about privilege, but about strength and justice. Leave him alone, she yelled, stepping closer as Reginald struggled to rise. If you ever bully anyone again, I'll be right here to put you in your place. The aftermath, Reginald scrambled to his feet, defeated and humiliated, his face bruised and flushed. This isn't over, he spat, stumbling backward as he retreated into the shadows, anger radiating from him like a storm. As the crowd began to disperse, Sarah knelt beside the homeless child, who looked up at her with wide, tear-filled eyes. Are you okay? She asked softly. The child nodded, sniffling. Thank you for helping me, they whispered, a flicker of hope shining in their eyes. With a warm smile, Sarah replied, you deserve to be treated with kindness. Remember that. As she stood, Julius and Sophia rushed to her side, expressions a mix of awe and concern. That was incredible, Sarah. Julius exclaimed, a grin spreading across his face. You really showed him, Sophia added, but maybe we should tone down the dueling for a while. Sarah laughed, feeling a wave of relief wash over her. You're right, but it felt good to stand up for someone. We'll make sure no one has to suffer like that again. As they walked home together, Sarah couldn't shake the feeling of empowerment that coursed through her. She was more than just a duke's daughter. She was a force to be reckoned with, a protector of those who could not protect themselves. With the sun setting behind them, Sarah's heart swelled with determination. She would continue to grow stronger, both in magic and in spirit, ready to face whatever challenges lay ahead.